Since forever, Skyblock has been based on the 1.8.9 version of Minecraft, which in 2019 wasn't so bad, but now it's absolutely ancient. Luckily, however, Skyblock's developers have shown great interest in updating the game to at the very least 1.19, but possibly 1.20 and beyond. And the amount of items and features that each update could bring to Skyblock cannot be described in a single video, but I will do my best to do so in a reasonable time. Before we begin, just a moment, if you could take just a few seconds to subscribe to the channel, it would mean the world to me. Now let's get started with 1.9. 1.9 has received a lot of hate since its release due to the combat changes. For those who aren't quite caught up, 1.9 revamped Minecraft's combat system in order to make player versus entity gameplay more interesting. The downside of this was that they paid no attention to player versus player combat, and it ended up ruining PvP games. And while it can be disastrous to update a PvP game to 1.9, a PvE game like Skyblock could see a lot of benefit from this update. For example, in 1.9, an attack speed modifier was added to tools and weapons in order to make fully charged hits more damaging than spam clicking. Skyblock already has a modifier similar to this, creatively called Attack Speed, which can up to double the amount of hits you can deal per second. Updating the game mode's version could allow for a visual cue as to when you fully recover and are able to deal another hit. Not to mention shields would be added, giving another layer of complexity and customizability to everyone's setups. Additionally, and this is an often overlooked aspect of the 1.9 update, is the end revamp, which adds end cities, shulkers, and most importantly, elytras. I can't possibly describe how much of a game-changing update elytras would bring to the game, as it's literally just a pair of wings. Not to mention the revamped end island we would get, and not that weak quote-unquote update we got to the end a few months back. The update would add even the little things for that extra bit of detail like grass paths, beetroot, and chorus fruit, which could give more depth and content to farming that is otherwise impossible in 1.8. I think I've been dragging on 1.9 for a little bit too long, so let's move on to 1.10. 1.10 is one of the most expansive updates to Minecraft ever, and it could add a ton of features to Skyblock. Polar bears in Jerry's workshop, strays and husks scattered throughout the game, and, uh, well, that's pretty much it. I kinda lied, 1.10 was really boring, but even then, those three mobs alone could be used for such creative things, as the developers have proven very creative with the limited features 1.8 has to offer. Now for 1.11, yet another more or less empty update, but not that many people realize that this is the update that gave shulker boxes, totems of undying, and illagers. Evokers, Vindicators, and Vexes could be used as the groundwork for a new Dark Forest extension of dungeons, and the Evocation Fangs particle could be used for no doubt many different things, like boss attacks and item abilities. And Shulker Boxes could make it so much more convenient to store items, as each one is basically a chest that can go in chests, or perhaps storage units, or even ender chest slots. 1.12 was a community favorite for many, many years, being the version that countless SMPs were based on up until the 1.16 Nether update blew it out of the water. And 1.12 featured all sorts of building blocks like colored beds, concrete, and glazed terracotta to add more detail to Skyblock's map, as well as parrots that could be a neat little addition to the jungle section of the revamped foraging island once that comes out. But none of those additions compared to one of the least known yet coolest mobs in the entire game, Illusioners. Being able to duplicate itself like Loki, they could literally be its standalone boss with a little bit of TLC. Now on to 1.13, and this is an especially juicy one, because the devs actually went into detail with the things they would want to do with the features this update offered, specifically related to a new fishing island called the Abyss. In 1.0 design thread number 9, Jay Avarman, one of the senior developers and game designers of Skyblock, went over their plans for a really promising fishing revamp, and talked about how underwhelming it would be without the 1.13 features like swimming, the thousands of tropical fish variants, and the countless new blocks, mobs, and particles that are otherwise limited to our imagination in 1.8. Just think about it, a system where certain tropical fish variants give you certain drops, 
and some ultra rare ones that can give you an ingredient to make the new best fishing weapon in the game, a trident. And you might be able to craft a conduit, which would drastically increase the efficiency of grinding underwater, or maybe a boss will spawn in which you have to destroy a set of conduits in order to deal damage, similarly to the end crystals in the dragon fight. The possibilities really are endless, and I can't be more excited for what the future of Skyblock has to offer. 1.14 is often considered the first modern version of the game, and includes pillagers and ravagers, which could be used in the Dark Forest dungeon I talked about earlier, as well as in places like the Forging Island or even the Nether Island. It adds dozens of utility blocks like campfires, barrels, lecterns, but most importantly, the composter. Why? so they don't have to make complicated models like this one in the garden. There are also six new note block sounds, which might be used in the future updates by Minecraft note block composers like Shankonet to further enhance the game's atmosphere and original soundtrack. Furthermore, there are sweet berry bushes, yet another crop that could be added to the garden in the future. But all of these additions pale in comparison to the crossbow, a special bow which could signal a major update to combat. With things like the custom charge times and custom abilities, the possibilities really are endless. Also, PANDA! 1.15 is a rather small update, but it could pack a decent punch for those who are obsessed with farming. Bees and the related blocks and items could be used for such a wide variety of things in the garden, ranging from increased crop regen speeds to honey possibly being used as a currency to add some modern features like beetroot or berries. The possibilities are, say it with me, no I'm not going to say it the third time, who do you take me for a bad commentator? Did you think Skyblock's nether update a year or so ago was big? Well take into account the fact that it uses absolutely none of 1.16's nether update features, which is considered one of the most significant Minecraft updates ever. Piglins, Hoglins, Crimson Forest, Warped Forest, Soul Sangalore, do you get the idea? Literally every aspect of the Crimson Isle can be reimagined with the features from this update. From the piglins and barbarians actually being piglins, to nether gold ore and netherrack. Oh wait, did I, did I say netherrack? Sorry, I meant netherite. And that would be an absolute game changer. Netherite tools, armor, lodestone, etc, etc. It doesn't take a creative genius like me to think of the insane things they could do with those tools and armor. I probably should have given more time to 1.16, but we are only two thirds of the way through these updates, so let's get right into 1.17 and 1.18. And combining these two updates because they are technically the same update, the Caves and Cliffs update, with 1.17 giving the items and 1.18 being the terrain generation. Azalea could make foraging a whole lot more than just trees, and while Skyblock technically has amethyst gemstones, I'm sure they can figure out something to do with the actual amethyst blocks. Copper could revitalize the gold mine island, which nobody steps foot in after mining level 5. Calcite, Tuff, and the Sort could also set the stage for a revamped gold mine island, catering to new players and endgame players alike. Hardstone in the Crystal Hollows could be replaced by Deep Slate, feeding into the lore of it being a deeper area below the Dwarven Mines. And speaking of the Dwarven Mines, Dripstone, need I say more? And the Jerry Island could be further enhanced by the use of Snow Your Snow, adding a little bit of danger to the otherwise docile island. And I didn't even get to the juicy part. A whopping 128 blocks of additional height could be added to the world, allowing for interesting private island builds as well as a potentially even more massive Crimson Isle, and perhaps even a remade Hub Island. Who knows, the possibilities are 1.19. Honestly, in the base game, it was pretty forgettable. But it did add the mangrove swamps to the game, which could be a really neat addition to the foraging island, and probably actually will since the devs have shown interest in updating the game to specifically 1.19. Maybe it could be the highest difficulty force to grind in, because there could be hostile frogs that spawn that could try to pull you closer to their mouths and eat you. Also, mud could add a mining aspect to the foraging island, similarly to how gravel has done so in the spider's den. But what is truly the biggest change would be the addition of the Warden, and it will be significant whether it's a boss, a slayer, a dungeon mob, or something even bigger. Maybe they will link the Warden to the Warden Helmet, making it less of a pain to grind than going to a single vein of iron ore and mining for dozens of hours. But with chat- And finally, 1.20. The devs have not yet shown interest in updating to 1.20 rather than sticking to 1.19, so the stuff mentioned here isn't guaranteed to be possible, but hey, this entire video is hypothetical anyway, so where's the harm? 
There's nothing that's insanely groundbreaking about the 1.20 update, apart from maybe the Cherry Grove which would add a chill and peaceful addition to the foraging island, but you can't deny the potential expansion of the archaeology quest into Spider's Den, with things like the decorated pot, sniffer, brush, and even smithing templates, which I believe could be used as reforged stones on some special armor pieces. Also on second thought, there is a desert themed dungeon expansion locked next to the catacombs. Maybe the archaeology update could be a bit more of an active twist to the dungeon experience than killing everything you see. And while we have yet to see what 1.21 has to offer, who the heck cares? The content from the aforementioned updates alone would provide the Skyblock devs with a lifetime of updates to keep the player base satisfied. And honestly, Minecraft will probably die before we run out of potential feature updates from 1.20 and earlier, so there's no need to get greedy. Overall, the future of Skyblock looks incredibly interesting, but don't you think you lack a say in it? At the end of the design thread, Jay of Varman posted a link to a Google form where you can provide your own feedback on some of the ideas said in the thread, and I highly encourage you to speak your mind. I put the link to the form in the description down below, and remember, we don't want to update the player's hate, so if you want your voice heard, make sure to fill out this form. Well that's just about it for me, this is easily the longest commentary video I have ever made and I don't plan on slowing down, so if you made it to the end, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe so that you can get recommended more content like this. I am so excited for the future of this game, and I'll see you next time.